Welcome to the Everything Everywhere Travel Writer Podcast. Join award-winning freelance journalist Joan Mianmatsui. Each week, you'll hear guests from all walks of life share their travel stories, tips, and advice on a variety of travel-related topics. Thanks for spending time with us today, and now it's time to dive into our interview. Well, good morning to another episode of the Everything Everywhere Travel Writer. And I've got my friend Mike Stevens back today. And we would like to talk about Thanksgiving. Mike, what would you like to talk about today? What What are you thinking about as far as Thanksgiving is concerned? Uh, I I think like everyone else does, the... Uh the memories it creates, you know, that the holiday creates itself. Um, all the things that you did during certain holiday, certain times of Thanksgiving, the things that went on with, uh, with all the neighbors and, and your folks coming around sometimes, depending on who was around town. But, um, you know, all that, oh boy, I guess it's maybe friendship and love. You know, that's really what should go around. If it doesn't all the time, it should. And um, uh, that's what I think of a lot of times when I think of Thanksgiving. What are some of your favorite Thanksgiving memories? Um, I know yesterday when we uh, when we talked uh, about doing this, I asked about, you know, whether you worked on Thanksgiving and you said you've worked many holidays <laughs> as I have. <laughs> yeah. And now that you were semi-retired, what are your Thanksgiving is like uh, right now? And, and what are some of your memories of Thanksgiving? Well, first of all, I did work, uh, as mm-hmm. you know. Yeah, uh, I know, I if know. you work, if you work in the television business, you work every holiday sooner or later. Right. And and of course, I worked. I worked all of them, and Thanksgiving was no different. So I missed. Sometimes I missed that preparation at home. My wife was able to do it, fortunately, but she was an RN too, and or is an RN. And so when she was working, it, both of us were sometimes out of the house, and my mother-in-law would help out. We'd go to her house for for Thanksgiving dinner. But you know, you you make do with what you uh, what you can, and if you have to work, you have to work. That's the way life is. But you know, I did find I, I found one thing that I wanted to share with you. Uh, it's from the Times Tribune newspaper in Scranton. Um, and they have a, uh, I'll just digress here, maybe just a moment, sure. uh, but, th- but they have a, a, a daily column uh, put together by a guy named Brian Fulton, who is the library manager over at the Times Tribune. And uh, he goes back in time and pulls out stories from whatever the time period was. And this happens to be 50 years ago, uh, the one that's in, in the paper that I have. And it, it's it's interesting because 50 years ago was 1972, I guess, 71. I'm sorry, 1971. And I looked at the prices. He lists the prices of things that you used to buy. And I remember some of these things because they were part of Thanksgiving dinner every year, every year, every year. But a grade A turkey uh, went for 35 cents a pound. Yes. yes. <laughs> 35 cents a pound, average 20 to 24 pounds. Now that's a lot of turkey. That is that's a lot enough, of turkey. <laughs> that's enough to feed the whole block. <laughs> um, uh, and the butterball turkeys, which you may remember, um, were 48 cents a pound, average 18 to 22 pounds. Um, stuffing bread was 45 cents a loaf. Uh, let's see, a package of frozen corn. We use frozen corn. That was 27 cents a package. Uh, sweet peas were 22 cents. You could get five pounds of potatoes for 45 cents. Mm. And um, <laughs> fresh mushrooms were 59 cents for a package. And four bottles of Yukon Club soda to wash it all down, 89, <laughs> 89 cents. I know. You know? So that's the, that's compare those prices w- with what we're paying today. Right. Um, somewhere inflation or I don't know what was responsible, but boy, it sure, it sure climbed a lot, you know, over the years. Especially but. this year, I've noticed it. I was looking at um, alternatives to a large, large turkey because it's mm-hmm. only going to be us this year, only five of us. 
I'm sorry, how many? Four of us. Ah. And, you know, what do we need a big turkey for? They don't even really like turkey that much. So mm-hmm. um, I looked at, I think it was Butterball turkey breasts, thinking, mm-hmm. we'll, we'll do a, a little turkey breast. And then her husband and the boys talked about getting duck. Well, I don't, I don't particularly like duck that much, but if they can eat the turkey breast, I can try the duck. So we looked into that, but I was looking at turkey breasts at one of our local supermarkets and, and even (laughs) the turkey and the turkey breasts were outrageously expensive. Yeah. I'm thinking, what do we do? Eat eggs? Maybe, maybe just eat eggs for Thanksgiving, eggs and potatoes (laughs) or or something like that. What do you think you're going to do? Get a large turkey? Uh, Well, actually we're, we're, uh, I think what we're going to do is we're going to end up, we're having, we're going to a relative's house for dinner. So I'm going to uh, to dinner. I always cook to dinner. I love oh, to you cook make to dinner. dinner. Yeah, yeah. Oh. And uh, <laughs> so we've decided on um, chicken. Mm. I don't know what the price is, but we'll spring for it, you know. And uh, so we got to get we have to get two chickens and um, shove them in the oven at the same time, twenty minutes a pound. Stuff them, of course. Are but you anyway, not- that's we're tr- we're trying chicken this year. Okay. It's um, we usually did uh, turkeys, you know, a small turkey, Mm -hmm. but we went, uh, we decided this year we're going to try the chicken, see what happens. And if it works fine, if not, then next year we'll (laughs) go back to turkey again. But right, right. I mean, really, what's one one year without turkey? It's not like a day without sunshine, that's for sure. It certainly isn't. (laughs) Yeah, yeah. But, you know, the turkey, I guess it goes back to uh, colonial era. That's what right. I'm told. And so it's, a, it, it's carrying on a tradition. But I think every family then, um, like yours, for example, if, if you like duck, well, you might oh, go with yeah. duck from now on. Right. But I think every family adapts their own, their own traditions, own customs per, per family. So. What are your other customs on Thanksgiving? <laughs> what else do you do? Uh, what else do you make on Thanksgiving? Since we're talking about food, <laughs> what else do you uh, you know? Are, are you doing anything else differently this year? Um, well, you know, last year we we didn't have anybody over because of the uh, the virus, and so nobody could come over to visit, or we couldn't go anywhere to visit. So this year we're kind of enjoying that. But as far as customs go, it's uh, it's pretty much standard food every year. It's pretty much the same thing. Um, everybody suggests that's the only thing I know how to cook. So <laughs> we're going to go with that. <laughs> Mike, but, do you make everything else with it? Like, do you make all of the, you know, all of the side dishes with it? Yeah. Yeah, I do. I, I go with the, uh, <clears throat> somebody helps me out with the gravy. Because right. I can't balance, I can't balance the pots all all the way around. <laughs> but I can get most of them. But somebody helps me with the gravy because I'm not very good at gravy making. Mm. Um, so somebody will help me with that. But I do all the other stuff, you know, cook the carrots, cook the potatoes, mash the potatoes, and my own private little formula that I make with mashed potatoes. And you know, I I do pretty much all, but I make the stuffing the night before, so that way you can have the you know, the flavors blend a little bit better stuff overnight. It. You don't stuff it the night, the night before. Yeah. No. And then, then you pack, it. yeah, you stuff it during the morning or whatever you're okay. prior to putting, putting it in the oven and let it go with that. You know, yeah. I love the aroma though. Oh my goodness. Oh, oh wow. <clears throat> Once that See, thing gets cooking in there. Ooh. That's one of the reasons I don't want to give up on that tradition of having something that's stuffed with that you know, that wonderful aroma. Mm-hmm. Uh, I mm-hmm. remember, I remember that since I was a little girl, my <clears> grandmother <throat> making dinner in her little kitchen mm-hmm. and then my mother making dinner in our kitchen. And then I've, um, I've, I'll tell you um, actually a quick Thanksgiving story. We years ago invited everyone up for Thanksgiving to our house. And I was really worried, as I always am. It might be part of my Italian heritage, but I'm always worried about not having enough for everybody, you know, because some people tend to eat a lot at Thanksgiving, right? Sure. And my family all, you know, enjoy food. And I went out to the grocery store 
and I was searching through the, the, the large section where they have all the turkeys. And I picked the biggest turkey I could find. <laughs> I don't know. I don't remember, but I think it was somewhere around 25 pounds. Oh my word. And I made the turkey. And, you know, when, you know, when, and when you sit down to eat, you are looking at everyone to see if there's any sort of expression, whether this is really good or, oh, mm, you know, <laughs> well, that did not happen that Thanksgiving. That was the driest, toughest turkey that oh, I've really? ever had. And, you know, I don't, I don't know if anything, um, if, you know, that had anything to do with the fact that they never came back again for Thanksgiving. Somebody always <laughs> offered to have it. <laughs> at their mm-hmm. <laughs> you know my mom was always the person who would give me the the, the rundown the day you know the day <laughs> after oh that was a delicious turkey or mm-hmm. oh that turkey mm-hmm. was you know really tough my mom didn't hold back so that was the last one that we that we did at our house that I remember mm-hmm. so that was my mm-hmm. was my turkey story well I missed it last year we didn't we didn't do what we would usually do and uh you know, no family comes over and, you know, your same right. story that you had. And yeah. uh, you kind of, everybody missed that, of course. So this year, I'm, we're all hoping and praying that it'll be different and better right. than last year. Well, yeah. I think even if, even if smaller groups get together, it'll be, a, you know, a, an improvement over last year. Um, but, you mm-hmm. know, there's, there's something else I want to talk to you about. And that's, I know you love sweets. I, I, I read your Facebook post. And then where can you get the best Thanksgiving pies in the area? Uh, I, well, now you're, now you're putting me on the limp. Oh, uh, I know, I know. With a, with a big saw. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but, um, <clears throat> well, first of all, I don't make a pie. Because okay. I've, I've never made a pie that succeeded. Let's put it that way. Okay. Uh, they always they always come out burnt beyond crisp, <laughs> <laughs> or, or or too juicy or whatever you know. So right. I've never I've never been very good at making pies, and I don't uh, I don't pretend to do it. So we we buy a pie or two and uh, keep them in the refrigerator for whatever time you know until we uh, until we consume them so to speak but i like a nice pie i mean i like the taste of it you know the texture of it all those little things that you that go into the making of a pie which you don't really think about a whole lot as right. you're eating it but it just all those things blend together so i go to i go to um, miller's orchard over near me and uh, you have to order the pies ahead of time. But boy, I tell you, they make a pretty good pie. We've been going there for a long time, off and on, of course, not every week. But we go up there occasionally to, to get a pie and to get one for Thanksgiving as well. So one of the high points today, right. so to speak. Well, I'm going to put you on the spot and ask, <sighs> how many... How many pies do you normally do you do you enjoy the pie more than the thanks more than the chicken or the you know or the turkey or when? uh no you know what it it kind of flows you know John, <laughs> it, it's you know you, you go from one to the next uh-huh. maybe you have a little um, side dish on here as you're going through the turkey here and uh-huh. maybe you move over and get a few more carrots here and uh, we have scallions occasionally. Somebody would grab a scallion and pull that over to you and everything. So it all goes, <laughs> there's a flow to it, you know. And sure. as you go along, um, the, the flow decreases as you <laughs> as you fill up. <laughs> so, but that old saw about leaving enough for enough for room for dessert, well, that comes into play. You know, right. you gotta you gotta leave enough for dessert. So that's what uh that's what I look forward to. I mean, again, it's the flow, it's the train of things that goes through. By the time it gets to the caboose, which is the pie at the end, well, you might not have room for the whip topping on it, but you'll at least have room for the pie. Growing up, what are what are some of the traditions that you remember that that stick in your mind as that, you know, maybe something in your in our younger days, it was um, we didn't have what you would call tradition traditions in the strictest sense of the word, where you know something happened at a certain time. Not like Christmas; Christmas mm-hmm. was different. Uh, but we had whoever was coming over would come over by about one o'clock, and the turkey would be 
everything would be timed to come out, say, 1.30. And by the time the, the turkey settled and you could cut it and all that, it was about 2 o'clock, 2.15. So you'd eat uh, <laughs> whatever wasn't nailed down, really. And then everybody would sit back and loosen their belts a little bit. And, phew, boy, that was tough. You know? <laughs> <laughs> What's it? Get any seconds in there? And <laughs> so, you know, that's what we that's what we would do. That's that was how it it went. And then everybody after the dishes were cleaned up and everything, everybody retired to the parlor and sit around and watch football. That's what we did. You know. Ah, yes, that was my next question. Is yeah. and well, not really a question, but an observation that rather than watch football after eating all of that i feel like i should be out playing football or, <laughs> yeah. or, or running around the block or doing something you know really uncomfortable uncomfortable bloated feeling after eating all of that um, yeah well i think i yeah that's one of those things that uh, uh, we all have a little bit of guilt over i think oh yes you know, uh, we should be out there I don't know, running around the block, as you said, you know, right, for about exactly. 15 times maybe, but we don't do that kind of hang out and do whatever, but we don't go running around the block. I don't know. I, and I'll probably get grief for this, but it seems to me like overeating that one day and maybe not exercising as you should is not going to, is not going to be the difference between 40 pounds. Okay. Yeah, 30 pounds and, and nothing. You know, I, <laughs> I think just that one day is is not going to do you in. Uh, right. Now, if you if you did it, you know, a dozen days in a row now, maybe you have a problem. But uh, as far as the one day, I don't know. And I maybe somebody will will correct me on that. And if so, I, I hope they do. Right. But, you know, to me, that's the way it's it's usually been. When I was growing up, it was the same way. Nobody went out. You know, I looked, of course, people worked different mm -hmm. kinds of jobs at that point too. And the jobs unto themselves were exercise that you didn't need to exercise from. Coal yeah. mining was kind of tough racket. Right. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> but when my grandmother made Thanksgiving dinner, she made a stuffing mm -hmm. that I've, over the years, <laughs> I've tried to make just like grandma did. It it was, I don't know what made it so good. I think probably uh, <laughs> because my grandmother was always very heavy handed with salt mm -hmm. and oil. So maybe there was a grease component to this that, that made it so good, but it was always just so soft and, and delicious. And, and it never got dried out, you know, towards <clears throat> the end, you could eat it the next day and it was equally as delicious. And, and she, I think my grandmother would put chicken liver and probably whatever was in the kitchen that tastes really good in stuffing. And so I try to make mine like that. But I, you know, I do admit um, that I've never been able to make it just like grandma. Everything tasted delicious. Well, yes. And that that's the first thing you learn about cooking, yes. I think. Yes. You cannot make it the way grandma used to make it. Mm -mm. You cannot do it the way your mother used to do it. No. Because each one of them imparted some little secret ingredient that you have no access to. You don't know what it is. The other thing is they imparted a lot of love and, and friendship and pleasure uh, and enjoyment in making the, the Thanksgiving whatever. And so it was... Uh, that's the way it worked out, and that's why that's why it tasted so good, and and why you can never equate it today. My my mother used to make <clears throat> she would can this is a quick diversion here, but she used to can um, cucumbers every summer, put the pickles uh, for the winter time. Obviously, <clears throat> after she passed on, my father said, "Boy, you know, I'd really love to have some of those pickles again." I said, "Well, geez, it ought to be easy enough to make, you know, and just." We'll find a recipe book and we'll make it. Well, we found her notes that she used. Did you? Wow. <clears throat> yeah. Now, wait, listen to this. It says a basket of cucumbers. Now, do you know there's four different size baskets of cucumbers? <laughs> you know, and then it says pickling spices, not by the ounces. It's just <laughs> pickling spices. Well, how many are they? So, so we find, we ended up trying it guess guessing most of it and we you know we put it in a 
And, and, and the shelves down in the basement, I don't know, a, a month later or something, my father could barely, barely wait to get to them. And uh, we tried them and, oh, boy, <laughs> they just they didn't were bad. out. <laughs> yeah, they weren't, they were edible, of course, but, uh, you know, <laughs> so far as having the same taste that she made, made them with, it, it wasn't there. And I concluded at that point that it was a useless venture to try to equate her cooking with my skills, you know? (laughs) Yeah. Because mom used to, you know, the pinch of this and pinch of that, even if you tried measuring it, if you said, all right, take a pinch of salt. Okay. She takes a pinch of salt and you actually measure how much is in that. You're never going to get it right. Cause you know what she does uh, may do automatically without even thinking you she puts that pinch in and then when nobody's looking she reaches over uh, <laughs> yes, exactly yes a exactly. couple more crystals go in that looks better now <laughs> right and, and so that one little pinch you mm-hmm. know that one little pinch of salt is not really an, an accurate an accurate um amount no all yeah. right well getting back to <clears throat> thanksgiving tradition mm-hmm. what uh what would you say is your, what are your thoughts about Thanksgiving and, and what we should be doing, what we are doing? Mm-hmm. What, what do you think Thanksgiving means? What does it mean to you? The, well, the obvious one is obviously giving thanks, you know, for all we have. We are, we are fortunate, obviously, to, I mean, many of us are. And those of us who are sitting down at Thanksgiving dinner especially appreciate it uh, because we have enough, we have enough food on the table. We have good friends, good family around us. Pleasure of their company, the pleasure of good food, laughter, uh, warmth around the table. I think that's what you look for in Thanksgiving dinner. It's not just about the food, although that's certainly important, but it's about who we are, who we're lucky enough to have around. There's always people who whose folks have passed on who, you know, have nobody to share the dinner plate with. But those of us who do have that uh, should be feeling Thanksgiving for that. The food, of course, on the table. But there's a, you know, there's a warmth to it, of course. It's very difficult to duplicate most other days of the year, with the exception of maybe Christmas, Easter, if you're inclined. <clears throat> but I think that warmth is what sets the day apart from all the others because the next day if you're if you cook like we do mm-hmm. you'll have enough left over for a second Thanksgiving <laughs> dinner maybe even a third but it won't taste the same it'll just be eh, let's have some leftovers we might as well and by the by the fourth day you're sick of it so you're putting stuff in the freezer if you can right. <laughs> you know the, so it, but it's that one day the one day that sets it apart from all the others, you know, that makes it warm and comfortable and just a lot of heart, I think. And I, I hasten to add that, and uh, to reiterate, I should, because it's, a, <clears throat> it's important to remember that not all of us in this world are as fortunate yes. as, let's say, you and I and our families. <clears throat> we have people to share things with. Um, we have a, a good home. We have a nice roof over our heads. These things are important. And a lot of people don't have those things. So we are fortunate, fortunate to have it. And I I think that's one of the things that I recall that day and uh, offer thanks for in my own little way. I hope you have uh, a very nice Thanksgiving, all things considered. And, uh, you know, enjoy dinner as much as you can and yes let's hope we have many more i appreciate that and same to you well we'll um we'll have to get together then in a couple of weeks and talk about christmas because that's oh yeah as well mike i really appreciate this and thank you for joining us today not not at all happy to happy to be here joan and you take care of yourself well thanksgiving day is upon us and i hope wherever you are you'll have a blessed Thanksgiving that makes up for last year. If someone you love has died, or you can't be together for one reason or another, I wish you peace and comfort. Please visit JoanMatsuiTravelWriter.com where you can subscribe to the show so you'll never miss an episode. 
While you're there, check out the travel writing courses, membership support platform, and private coaching services to help you learn travel writing. If you found value in this show, we would appreciate a rating on iTunes, and don't forget to tell a friend.